Well, we fixed the uh, audio. Um, we now found the perfect way to do it because I just heard our political talk and boy, did I sound fucking loud. <laughs> Very loud. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to put a uh, forewarning on that. Turn your fucking volume down. But hey, this is Gray Fox 37. And you get your 23. And we're going to review issue 8 of Nintendo Power today. So this is from September, October of 1989. And look at that. We got DuckTales. DuckTales was a very fun game from Camp, from Capcom. Mm -hmm. you know, it, was, it had a really awesome uh, side-scrolling system where Scrooge McDuck basically was going around the world to gather treasures, and then you basically would you know, do it before Long Goldwood, and uh, you'd battle a bunch of uh, bosses. Like, Magic of the Spell was one of them, which is, you know, the furry fandom's, like, favorite duck, apparently. <laughs> I've seen some pretty, I've seen some pretty, pretty big teddy pictures of her. Woo! But anyway, wow. uh, yeah. <laughs> but I digress. Um, basically, it, it was a great game. You could like uh, use his uh, cane to whack uh, things to get treasure. You could do a pogo stick effect with it to stomp enemies and stomp treasure boxes and uh, basically bounce over secret passages and Boing. whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> also, they did a re uh, remastered version on uh, Steam, which I have yet to play, which would be fun okay. for recording. And, uh, you know, it looks really good. And they have the original voice actors in it, like uh, Alan Ladd uh, for uh, Scrooge before he passed away, you know. So it's good to get that, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Game Boy hits the go. So we're probably going to start getting some Game Boy games in here. Uh, Batman uh, Preview Plus Poster, which, you know, has the awesome Streets of Desolation song on the oh, first yeah. level. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention was I was getting over a cold. I didn't have COVID, fortunately. Pikachu's parents did, but they were over it, I believe. Yeah, I might have had it too, but I'm over it too. Yeah. So I was. Uh, it was just I had mucus and things like that, so I wasn't dry. I wasn't dried out and having heavy breathing. I had a cold, and I usually get one every year. I had one last February when I started my new job, and now I had one uh, last week, and sadly had to eat up two and a half uh, days of my paid time, or excuse me, sick time. But you know, not the end of the world there. So, yeah, here we go. So, bonus Super Mario Brothers 2 tip book part 2. All right. Whoa. So, there it is. The 1-900-420-6100. Captain Nintendo has a new 900 number. Call it for the latest news, strategies, and tips of the week. 24 hours a day. The message runs on about two minutes and changes every Sunday morning. A call to Captain Nintendo is a buck fifty for the most powerful information you can get. Yay. Gee, I wonder how many parents' phone bills were pretty much and and phone and how many children's phone privileges were, you know, ripped ripped away there. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do this. Um, let's. Uh, I don't. Rem I don't remember if we called these numbers. We're not going to do the one nine hundred number because I know they're going to if they're still in. Ex I have you know I don't even know if nine hundred numbers are still in existence. But uh, basically, uh, let's try some of these 1-800 uh, numbers here. So let's do, I don't remember if we did Nintendo Power subscriptions, but I think they had a uh, recording last time. So let's... Uh, do one of them. Yeah. I don't know if we recorded Let's do 1-800, I think we did, but let's do 1-800-521-0900. So I think they're probably going to have a recording on it, but let's see. Thank you for calling Nintendo. After 18 years and over 28 million calls, we have discontinued our live game counseling. They are, yeah, we did hear that before. So yeah, just it's just fun to do that sort of thing. So then let's go ahead and talk. Let's call customer serve or consumer service for Nintendo Power. So 1-800-255-3700. Uh, now this one isn't showing up on my cell phone. So let's see if this one does. You've reached Nintendo, and even though we're closed right now, you can visit our website, support.nintendo.com, to access troubleshooting, reset parental controls. There you go. And it sounds just like the recording from Cox Communications. <laughs> That's funny. He must have switched jobs or something. <laughs> Here's the game counselor's number, and this is a Washington area code. So 1-206-885-7529. Oh God! If we're going, <laughs> now I'm worried we're gonna get we're gonna get somebody that's gonna be so fucking pissed off with us. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and pray that we don't. Yeah. We're just trying it. Number you have dialed is not in service. Oh, Yay! not in service. Yeah, thank. Well, also thank God. <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. So we got to try some of those yeah. numbers there. 
All right, so table of contents here. We got DuckTales, join un George, <laughs> join <laughs> Uncle Scrooge and the gang in a wacky worldwide treasure hunt. Dragon Warrior, hell yeah. Ooh. Insights on how to achieve greatness in this RPG saga. Hoops, downtown jump shots, and dazzling dunks in the playground. At the playground. Fester's Quest. Ugh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, Morticia is using the light bulb again. Roger Rabbit. Ugh. Oh dear. Gee, Eddie, can Toons play too? <laughs> NES satellite? Look, Ma, no hands. Now your NES controllers can be converted to remote control. Like I said, Nintendo had so many innovative things even back then yeah. that you're getting excited for. Game Boy, you can take it with you into this hot new portable game system. I'll have to wait for the color if you want to hear any of my series commentary on that. <laughs> <laughs> Video shorts, Air Fortress, Bad Street Brawler, Casino Kid, Castle Quest, One on One, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is what Dynasty Warriors is based off of, oh, cool. and Sky Shark. Counselor's Corner, Classified Information, Another Howard and Nestor. That uh, Batman poster looks pretty badass there. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see that. Uncle Fester on one side, Batman on the other. And then here's the previews. Willow, you've seen the movie, now play the game. Now, the Willow Nintendo game was an RPG format similar to Dragon Quest, so, you know, it was all right, but yeah. Mm -hmm. River City Ransom, oh yeah. If you ever want to see your NES kid, boy, and that spawned the new River City girls where they're out to save their boyfriends and everything. It's, a, it's actually a pretty fun game, and it's got some pretty decent graphics. Then, of course, Batman, Help the Cape Crusader Save Gotham City, NES Play Action Football, Real NFS, L Stars Come to Life on Your NES, Tecmo Super Bowl's better, but anyway. Mm, yes, Tecmo. Pack Watch, Shadowgate, which is one of the very first uh, point and click adventure games from a company, uh, for, well, for the Nintendo based company is Kemko Seiki. They also make Deja Vu and they also make uh, Uninvited. So they're, they're set, they were games that were on the Amiga and also on the Macintosh and uh, really good adventure games. Deja Vu is my favorite, so. A Boy and His Blob, a uh, very notorious game there. Godzilla, Codename Viper, Tombs and Treasure, Gilligan's Island, Win, Lose, or Draw, and then Double Dare. From I wonder the famous... if it's the good Godzilla, because <laughs> probably... I heard a lot of them aren't very good for yeah. games. Double Dare is, uh, is basically that good old Nintendo or Nickelodeon show where it's like uh, Dare, Double Dare, Physical Challenge, yeah. And then Players Polls Top 30, NES Achievers, NES Journal, Back issues, next issue from the editor player's poll, Super Mario 2, yippee. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's check the stop or the uh, spotlight. There's a have a super birthday, Jason. See, back then you could make uh, cakes that had uh, basically cartoon characters on it or special sort of uh, logos and things. Back before copyright laws came down really, really hard. Yeah, that's cool. So you got this Mario, you know, cake here that was really badass. So that's yeah. pretty cool there. Um, let's see, and then uh, got this dude wearing a custom-made Mario shirt that turned out really, really well. And look at that '90s stash, little or late or '80s, early '90s stash he's got. <laughs> <laughs> then we got these three kids with Contra power player profiles for Mike Shannon and Danny Tosto. They live in Yorktown Heights, New York, and they're 12, 13, and seven. So that's pretty cool there. So if you want to pause yeah. it and read uh, read some of the stuff here, yeah, happy birthday from Nintendo, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, this, uh, I'm a power player, I'm 32, and I have some accomplishments to share. I've beaten many of your harder games like Deadly Towers, Bionic Commando, Zelda, Adventure of Link, Double Dragon, and A Million Secret Castle. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're Blaster so old! Man, Master, you know, using Wait, only one man. did they say Mylon's Castle? Yeah. Oh no! Using only one man in Blaster Master, that's good. <laughs> I finished Super Mario 2 in 28 minutes. That's, you know, Ow. see, this is, God, this is just what was great about, you know, another thing about growing up during that time, too, as an adult, just being able to do cool things like that. Yeah. So here's the awesome Disney artwork for DuckTales. Mm. We got Launchpad, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. We got Webby, got the Beagle Boys, got Bubba, and uh, just some of the enemies, so it's really great. Uh, they're showing screenshots and showing you how to play the game here. Jump to find hidden treasure, and yeah, you if you if you jump at certain parts, like diamonds would appear and things like that. So it's really cool. It's like three different endings, so you can either let Longold win at the end or not and stuff. I'll just leave it at that. So you see, like like uh, AVGN said, I love how they basically have maps, even if you didn't own the game. It, you're right, it's just so much fun 
to just see what everything looked like. I always loved how they would transition actual in-game with onto the here, especially with like the Mega Man games and Zelda and whatnot. Yeah. So it's just really fun to see all of this here. Can get I talk about Mylon's Castle real quick since it did uh, get made? Yeah, yeah, so sure. We watched the video that AVGN did on Mylon's Castle recently. Um, if you manage to beat that game, I don't know if you're demented or if you're really smart. I'm not sure because if you watch his video, it's insane. The game is crazy. Well, but um, I find it. I wanted to mention it because he had to go to Nintendo Power to f try to figure it out. And oh, look! It's just instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was gonna go. say that's my only, funny little thing. Yeah, I was gonna say only the porn stash guy would know. Yeah, <laughs> Apparently, you know, you beat it and it's a harder game, but sometimes you have to It's it's dementedly hard. <laughs> you know, today when you kinda look at it, you have to ask yourself, is it really hard or is it just badly programmed? Sometimes. There are some legit tough games like Ninja Gaiden, for example, oh. and Zelda 2 was a challenge, especially later on, even if you would level yourself up. Yeah. But regardless of that, though, some other games like Mylan's Castle, you have to ask yourself, is it really a challenging game, or was it just hard because the programmers were demented? Yes, like you said, that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the Transylvania level, which I just, I love the Transylvania level. It has such an awesome, uh, it has such an awesome theme to it. You know what? I tell you what, let me, um, let me get out of uh, full screen here real quick, and I'm going to put this on the, uh, yeah, the other it. screen here, <laughs> so there we go. So yeah, I'm going to uh, play the Transylvania theme. There we go. Oh, it's the remastered one. So here's the NES one here. Classic, uh, you know, Capcom vibe to it because then at parts you're like, hey, this sounds like a Mega Man song. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good old Capcom. Capcom had some of the best, or Capcom, Capcom and Konami had amazing soundtracks for their games, basically. So I got to give them a lot of credit for that. Uh, you know, Castlevania, of course, was sponsored with Konami. So there you go. So yeah, they give you the warp chart because there's warp mirrors in the level and it will show you like where each of them leads you to. And then of course you take on Magicka in this level as the boss. African Mines uh, had, has a really nifty little uh, secret in that I actually discovered on uh, Johnny Arcade, which was that old uh, show back in the late 80s, early 90s, where basically it was video power, and then they made a game show out of it. But before they made it a game show, Johnny Arcade would do tips and tricks in the beginning. Well, he did it in the game show in the beginning, but he would be living at, in his little, like, little home and stuff and uh, basically be coming in with a skateboard and his radical like striped shirts because striped shirts were in back then and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. and, he, and the DuckTales tip that I learned was right over here on this part where after uh, Mrs. Uh, um, Beakley gives you some ice cream to restore your health and whatnot, you can cross here to a shortcut by hopping on these like these little green frog creatures here as they're showing here and then you get like a big treasure box that they're showing over here that'll show a, a cool million for a ring there and i just loved it when i rented the game i never owned the ga this game but when i rented the game and i did that i was like i'll be damned it worked i was like all right you know so like i said back then we didn't have the internet you know we would be no. going to nintendo power or i'd watch johnny arcade and i'd learn some tips from them and i was just like i'll be damned you know and you just feel as a kid of course growing up during the you know the print time and everything you're just like you get that sense of accomplishment or if you figure out things on your own or even better when your parents figure out oh, some yeah, things for funny. you like when night when we do the night shade issue on the uh issue 34 the legend of zelda link to the past issue which is another favorite of mine um 
my mom actually was like uh, said, I wonder what happens if you do this, and it was just such a cool experience. My grandma, I remember when I was playing Thief, helped me out with the uh, Hammerite mission when you go undercover as a, a Hammerite novice and trying to get the uh, Talisman of, uh, I think it was the Talisman of Water, and uh, oh, or, yeah. or Air Water, I don't remember which one. I had the gold version, but um, it's been a while since I played it, but uh, I loved it when, uh, gra when I was like the key arch, and it's like, maybe it's a tree next to an arch, Grandma, you magnificent woman. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's just but it's just so cool when you figure out things or you're just like, hey, it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, or like if you're not really good at a game and then you finally beat like a robot master in uh, like in Mega Man, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, right? <laughs> jack myself off. <laughs> <laughs> So here's some tips on battling the bosses. The Amazon, you got the Incan King, Roly Poly uh, King with uh, with uh, African Mines, Magic of the Spell with Transylvania, and the Himalayas. Well, I don't know why they call this the uh, Himalayas because that's the African Mines there, but whatever. And the Himalayas basically you take on the uh, Abominable Snowman, of course. Uh, you also free Bubba from Ice, and he'll give you an extra uh, life uh, point. And then the Moon. Which has Gizmo Duck that'll be you have to find a remote control for. You battle a lunar rat there. But what's funny yeah. though, what's funny though is you um the moon is like everybody's favorite theme in that in that in that game. I like the Transylvania theme way better. You know, the moon of course is an epic sort of like that you know i can't really hit high notes because i have a deeper voice so sorry for my sorry for ruining your guys ears there <laughs> but you know after that you go back to transylvania like you go back to transylvania and you battle count duckula I, not not the count duckula but uh it, it is a, a vampire duck so i'll just say that <laughs> yep. dragon warrior step Yay. into the legend so that is such just badass artwork there showing the warrior wearing like his clothes and then having like that stick on his back with his satchel and then that fur cloak and then the, the castle in the background. The road is long and full of hidden dangers. Artwork on the border is so cool. They, they show the, uh, the Lodo uh, symbol of the hero and everything. So cool. Then they show some sketches. That's that such a badass sketch of a uh, serpent. And then they got some of the monsters like the scorpion, the ghost, the magician, the drakey, um, you know, the skeleton. And then like showing some scenes in the game. I mean, this was like before Final Fantasy came on the Nintendo, this was just basically God. Like I like the Dragon Quest series way more than I like uh, the Final Fantasy series. But the Final Fantasy series up to six are good. And then afterwards, it's like you kind of nitpick mm. things out of it that you enjoy. And yeah. So here it's giving you like basically tips to do in the beginning of the game and things of that nature. You know, speaking of the king, getting gold, things like that. Typically what you can do in the beginning is you can either get the club and clothes or you can get the bamboo uh, stick and the uh, leather armor. You know, it depends on whether you want to have more attack power or more defense. Personally, I like the club and clothes combination a lot better because the bamboo stick can suck a nut. So, oh. but it's really, it's really the cypress stick in, uh, in the Japanese version, but yeah. Then you go explore Edric's, they call him Edric in the Nintendo version, but his real name's Lodo. So you go into his cave and you learn about your destiny with the tablet. God, this artwork is just so good. Mm. Oh man, just look at that. He's just got a torch, holding his torch because you'd have to use torches when he went into dungeons. Later on, they got rid of that. Oh, and then you dig into chests while you have your sword stuck in the ground. That's just so cool. Mm. And then here's North Alfgard. And, uh, you know, which basically is a part of a, is basically a land that extends out in uh, Dragon War or Dragon Quest 2. And this is the dark world in Dragon Quest 3, basically. So that's Whoa. the ironies oh, of yeah, it. Because Dragon Quest 3 stuff, is, yeah. a pre is where it start all started. And that actually happens to be my favorite Dragon Quest game. Mm. So they have a pretty good sketch of the uh, initial uh, area and things like that. Like there's Call there and, you know, you got the other towns around. So, you know, they tell you how to level and things like that. Just go through fights. That's a cool picture of a dude stretching his arms out with his long sword in the ground. The hurt spell is really the, uh, the uh, fizzle spell. So it's like the fire spell and stuff like that. Then they tell you like where you need where you should go at what level in the game and everything. That is such a badass picture of at a campsite this this skeleton with blood in its mouth, just like going coming through the wilderness. God, this artwork is great. 
So that's pretty much it. So they kind of give you kind of a rundown. Now, the, the Dragon Warrior cart came with a mini strategy guide that would actually pretty much lead you through the game. And they would tell you you'd be ready for the Dragon, uh, the Dragon Lord at level 20. Honestly, though, get to 24 to do more damage. Because 20, you're, you know, I mean, it's going to take a while for you to level. But, you know, if you're playing it on an emulator, you can speed it up while you level. That's what I do. If I'm grinding, I just speed everything up. So the NES Satellite, it was basically a four-player a four uh, uh, add-on that you could plug into the Nintendo's uh, two-player ports, and you could stick four, play, or four uh, game pads into it. It could be like the Advantage or the Joypad. This was essential if you wanted to play Nightmare on Elm Street the best oh, way, yeah. basically. <laughs> as as semi lame as that game is, it was still fun. To, it's still fun to play with four people, or even Gauntlet. So, well, Gauntlet too, but yeah. It was basically before, because I grew up with the GameCube. We had four players, so this is what you would do before that. <laughs> And then, uh, lo and behold, uh, you know, here's the new packs that will be good for the satellite. So I mentioned Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, this LGN horror pack. <laughs> oh, no. And then USA Championship Volleyball, uh, uh, Magic Johnson's Fast Break, NES uh, Play Action Football, which I wasn't really a big fan of, and then Offer It. What's well, funny, when I, when I look at Magic Johnson, I am suddenly get a flashback. There was a kid named Jeremy in my second grade class, no, no, third grade class, uh, Miss Gallagher, I'll never forget this, um, they were talking about, we were doing a spelling, like, kind of like we were learning how to spell words, because we were going to have a third grade spelling bee, and AIDS was one of it, not, not the disease, but basically, you know, people that help you out and assist you in things of that nature, AIDS, A-I-D-E-S, and Jeremy, I'll never forget, said, can we also say Magic Johnson has AIDS? And back then in elementary school, you'd have <laughs> conduct cards to basically be excellent, good, satisfactory, needs improvement, you, oh, or unsatisfactory. Nice. So it was e e g s n u. So that's what I went by when I was in Tennessee. And this is in Tennessee. So I just loved it when Miss, C Miss Gallagher was just like... Uh, Jeremy, go pull a card. And I was like, <laughs> and I sat there. I was trying hard not to laugh. But I'll never forget him saying that and just the way Miss Gallagher dropped that. And, I, and my mom even remembers that too. So good good times. Good times, you know. Now, of course, you know Magic Johnson's aides were healed by all of his money. So, yeah. <laughs> So here's the hoops game. I don't really have a whole lot to say about this because I'm not a big fan of like street hoops or like you know blacktop hoops or anything. But uh, it's just cool to see basketball games, you know, with you know, come about and whatnot. So, and it was pretty cool that they had a top-down view that would basically have the bucket or the bucket basically facing you and whatnot. So that was still that was still pretty cool uh, perspective for a Nintendo game. Then you got the Counselor's Corridor, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, how do I get to, uh, through Ooh. Section 17 in Area 4, which is the airport, so yeah. They got like, I mean, that was loaded with perils, like those pushing spikes, traps, and everything. Ooh. How do I defeat the enemies at the end of Areas 4 and 5? Simple, have Donatello. <laughs> You know, you got to jab the mouth of the uh, of the Mighty Mouser and then the Technodrome. That was a tough boss, I'll tell you that. I, I was so lucky. I, I've only beaten that game once without cheating, and I was just lucky as hell, I'll tell you that. So then it's Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, Where's the Hammer? Well, you got to go through the maze of, uh, of um, uh, Death Mountain. And you know you have to cross the bridge in Saria, which you know they named all all the uh, why, the uh, all the sages in Ocarina of Time after the towns in Zelda Two, which I thought was a nice touch. So Saria and Ocarina of Time is actually your Kokiri friend that gives you the ocarina in that game. And Saria is a river town where you have to find a mirror. Basically, um, you basically have to find a mirror. Uh, under a table and then give it to this chick that lost it and then you'll get to the uh, to the wise dude in the town and um, You know basically you'll be able to uh, get get a spell. I think it's the fairy spell if I recall so uh -oh, and hey listen fairy yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'll tell you to get your uh, get to the fourth level of attack magic and life which yeah good advice But when you're speed running it you're at pretty dangerously low levels there so, you know, you also have to find Bagu in this forest here, of course, like they did in that comic before that with Howard and Nestor, which was cool. Mm -hmm. And you basically, you know, get the permission from Bagu to build the bridge to get to Death Mountain, and then you go through it. Um, so now we got the gameplay counselor profile. So we got uh, Todd J. Bergman, who pretty much looks like a stereotypical early 90s guy. 
Uh, he became a count game counselor in January of 1989. His hobbies are scuba diving, weightlifting, and tennis. He does look like a weightlifter. Yeah. Highest game score is track and field, 999,999 or or 999, points. Damn. Uh, favorite NES game, the Guardian, Le uh, the Guardian Legend. Meh. Kim Racy, she became one in January of 89. It's a lady. <laughs> Ooh, it's a lady. Yeah, she's got the striped shirt and the suspenders, which was another uh, stereotype of late 80s, early 90s fashion. Hobbies include reading, fishing, cross-stitching. There you go. Wow. There you go, Pikachu. <laughs> and then video games. Highest game score, Bomberman, 7,628,500. Dang. Favorite NES game, Legend of Zelda. That's cool. Ooh. Dave Murray, who looks like a discount Gomez Adams, uh, wearing a, he also has a, uh, one of those vests with his tie. Yeah, that's really good there, old man. Became a game counselor in January of 89. His hobbies include saltwater fishing. Oh, that is fun. I caught, I've caught a, a swordfish before. And camping, that's cool. Highest game score, Athena, 4 million. Favorite NES game, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. That's cool. That game's funny. <laughs> Rob Baker, he became a game counselor in January of 1988. And I'm wondering if that's a uh, uh, typo, but uh, who cares. This looks like a stereotypical kid. Like, he doesn't even look like he's even an adult. He, he, yeah, you don't even look like you got nuts on, or I mean, hair on, or pubes on your nuts. <laughs> Hobbies include paper mache sculpture. That's cool. Piano, guitar, movies, pe people watching. Creepy! <laughs> well, it, maybe I wonder if he's in some of our fine institutions today. And no, I was kidding. <laughs> Highest game score was Bubble Bobble, six million six hundred eighty-eight thousand two hundred sixty. Damn. He was very dude. bored. <laughs> Favorite NES game, Mega Man. All right. <laughs> Counselor's Corner, more of it. Where is Castlevania, and how do I get there for Castlevania Two? So yeah, basically you got to uh, if you have to uh, if you have the cross in all five parts, you can break the bricks in the wall when you get down there. And then you cross the bridge and you go through the easiest path to Dracula ever. Oh. Well, I take that back. Um, Castlevania Adventure 2 Belmont's Revenge on the Game Boy had the easiest path for his level. You hear creepy music and go across a br bridge across blood. And then you just drop down and summon him. That's about it. And this one you got to go through some hoops. But it's just it. But it's the fight against Dracula and Castlevania 2 is like one of the easiest. Just keep whipping him or just chucking sacred fire. But whatever. Metroid, how do I get uh, over the wide gap and tall pipe in Ridley's hideout? Ah, uh, yes. Well, the bombs will help open new paths, so it'll show you that. Or you can do what I did, get the zipper pad and just rapidly bomb all the way up and waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Rip Ridley's uh, hideout was, I hated that place in the original Metroid. Oh. Avengers of Lolo, how did I get through Section 10-3? I never played that game, but it's an I interesting it top-down, it's an interesting top-down puzzle game. With just a bunch of weird freaks that you play as. So, hey. Uncle Fester, here's Fester's quest. Oh no! The Adams family, yeah. God, this game is just—it's got great music, but this game sucks. Yeah, you can watch AVGN's thing to see how bad it is. Whip and gun. I mean, it, it plays—it <laughs> plays similar to uh, Blaster Master when you're going through the uh, th through the uh, indoor places outside of Sofia. So, um, you know, but it's just that doesn't mean it's fun. It's a very, this is a very difficult and frustrating game. And then when you go inside buildings, you know, you have to go through like these little first person mazes in order to get to the bosses. The mm -hmm. boss theme in this game is awesome. I will give it that. This is such a, just, it's just such a, a game that had so much potential and just turned out to be such a waste of time, basically. And look, that whip doesn't eerily look like the flame whip from Drac or from a Castlevania 2. No. No. <laughs> Who framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, uh just bad. <laughs> uh, bad game. So much chance and potential. Very bad game. So they show the, the scene with Judge Doom holding Roger by the throat. And, uh, you know, Eddie, of course, is like, I think you want to drink. You know, rest in peace, Bob H uh, Hoskins there. But, uh, yeah. It's great to see an Australian actor just, uh, you know, play an American voice, especially a hard-boiled one so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So RJ Maroon's been murdered. All evidence points against Roger, of course. So I can't take this anymore, Eddie. My whole life turned topsy-turvy. I'm, wa I'm wanted for murder. Judge Doom's weasels are chasing me. Weasel. I have the worst. I got the worst Roger Rabbit impersonation. <laughs> and my agent hasn't called me in weeks. There's even rumors that Doom is planning on kid, uh, to kidnap Jessica and me. I think I'm going loony. 
And they got private detective Eddie Valiant. Not only, not only do I have to find the four parts of this missing will, I also have to keep Roger from getting run over by cars and carried up by annoying vulture. So, vulture, uh, annoying vulture. Plus, I have to defeat Judge <laughs> Doom. But the worst part of it all is Roger's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for a good place to stick a knife. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this artwork is... I mean, Roger's artwork's cool, but uh, Eddie just kind of looks... Poor Eddie. You know. So, you know, it shows all the shit that you can gather. Spring shoes, cigars, portable holes, crowbars. You know, everything a private detective needs in a tune world. And then here's Tinseltown and everything. And, you know, just the worst driving controls ever. Music, uh, music tries really hard to play off on the, um, the, uh, uh, movies vibes and everything. You can even go, like, to the outskirts of town and everything, and, you know, a lot of freaking awe. Oh, look, they had to reduce Jessica's breasts. Oh, well. Of course they did. <laughs> Who waits in Toontown? Who the fuck do you think? I don't know! So, not too bad of a drawing. Kind of gives a good 40s, 50s vibe to Jessica there. Uncle Fester on one side and Batman on the other. Let's see if I can... God, that poster of Batman is so cool. Mm. Game Boy, compact video system. It's all in your hands. The Game Boy, what is it? So we pretty much know what it is, obviously. I hope so. Unless you've been living under a rock. <laughs> I like these old cartridge uh, covers that they have here. You know, we know that they didn't turn out to look like... I mean, this one did, but, like, the whole little border thing with the title didn't turn out to be like that. They fused the title into the background and stuff, but, uh, Game Boy was such, I mean, it was such an innovative tool for its time, I tell you. I was so thrilled to get mine in, uh, 19, I think it was 1991. Yeah, I got mine in 1991, and I got it for Christmas from my, uh, grandparents on my dad's side. And I also got Metroid 2 with it, so I was like Thrillsville and everything like that. But uh, Metroid 2 scared the hell out of me with that Metro music. Da -da -da, you know? and, but I eventually beat it. You know, I finally braved, uh, toughened up and braved enough to do it. But uh, as much of a linear game it was, it was just great to finally go through, um, you know, just uh, continue with Samus and everything like that. Then, of course, Super Metroid comes and just takes the cake there. Uh, link with the Soviet Union. <laughs> Tetris designer uh, Pasanov, yeah. So, Howard Lincoln presents Game Boy to Soviet players to be. Boy, you know, even with all the heat that they were under and everything during this time, it was just good that the power of video games could bring us together. Mm -hmm. What the hey? All right. Yep. And then they got the link cable and everything, and that would even come with the uh, the Game Boy. Bulletproof oh, technology. Later Game Boy models. <laughs> so they show the Game Boy Tetris game. They show Nestor freaking out uh, because and he's got blocks in his eyes and everything. Uh, oh, it's the Nestor comic. Uh, it's underneath oh. the Game Boy review. <laughs> Nestor, where are you? Have you done your homework? Nestor, telephone. Nestor, didn't you hear me? Wow, his mom's kind of uh, butch there. Uh, oh, what's this? This looks easy. Mom, do, do you have other things to do? Not now, Nestor. She, she absconded the Game Boy and is now playing it. Kind of reminds me of when my folks, you know, played Dr. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so they got Mario and Luigi as the, as like when you link the Game Boy together, you, you can pick either Mario or Luigi. And then whoever wins, it's like Luigi will jump or Mario will jump and the other will cry and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take the power of Nintendo anywhere with Game Boy. I mean, it's just, like I said... Nintendo consoles are the most innovative. They're just some of the most innovative in the history of consoles. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, Xbox and PlayStation took over graphically and just kind of, like, started pioneering in that. But the Nintendo pioneered, even even if it was bad stuff, like the Virtual Boy, for example, it was just still just phenomenal and fascinating to just see what they could come up with with portable systems or just ways to make combos or just ways to get you involved physically and stuff like the track and field pad and it's just it's like i said they, nintendo was just such an is such an innovative system and still is today i mean i yeah. love the switch it's a great console yeah, the switch is awesome Hey, Howard, have you seen the new Game Boy? Sure, both of us can play with the video link cable. Game over. Oh, no. Now, that's, now that I have this confidence of next time, I'll let him have it. Yeah, <laughs> good, good. Okay. Look for previews of the hottest games. So you got Willow, River City Ransom, great beat-em-up. Uh, Play-action football, Batman. So here's Willow. 
uh, showing a lot of, like, I really love how they put in these little portraits when you talk to people and go in their homes. And uh, then you got your, like, your sword, shield, and magic, and then your hit points, your level, things like that. So it was really, I mean, it's not that bad of a game. I had a lot of fun with it. That's some pretty good artwork there. And then they're using the power meter, of course, and then your player meter you could fill in yourself. Nice little map of where you go, like the Sacred Towers, Haunted Island, Tavern of the Traveler, you know, all those, uh, yeah, Sherlindria. Sherlindria's wand! Tirasleen! Tirasleen! And then Nakamar Castle and whatnot. So, yeah, Willow, Willow's such an awesome movie. I, you know what? I haven't watched, I haven't watched that movie in a while. That sounds like something we could definitely do. Um, so, you know, you go to Willow's hometown, and you get to see all the weapons there. Then you go to uh, River City Ransom. These should be higher than fours. These should all be fives, basically. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of a side score beat em up that's, uh, that even, like, along the way, you can go inside shops, and you'll have, like, your little anime eye, upside down eyes and everything, like, oh! And you can order, like, uh, you know, like, tea and stuff, like, rejuvenated things. And then you can purchase moves, which I thought was really cool. So when you beat up people, they're like, barf! And then they do, like, ching, ching! They drop all this change. And then you save that up, and when you go into towns, you can buy special moves like Dragon Punch or Stone Fist or things like that. So really cool stuff, and then you could do like in um, in uh, dra Double Dragon, pick up weapons like hammers or wheels or chains, and just you know wallet people. It's just it is such a badass game, it's such a badass game. And they even the same creators of this made a dodgeball game that uh, is really fun too. And uh, Legendary Cape Crusader, you know, is Batman, and they're showing Michael Keaton yeah, yeah. scenes from the from the movie and everything, and. This was a really fun side scroller. Great soundtrack to it too. Yeah, that's that's like get a load of me. <laughs> and uh, great, you know, good four 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 and four point five for theme fun, fun. You know, it was this is a really tough game, tough game, but really fun game. And they show stage one, area one, which has the best music. <laughs> yeah. NES play action football. Some good artwork of, of football teams here, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's the uh, the Los Angeles Rams there. Yeah. Which went to St. Louis and back to Los Angeles. Nobody really seemed to notice. No, I'm nope. just kidding. <laughs> and it was kind of like an isometric view, like SimCity 2000, but blah. Classified information, 1943, custom made mode. So you got like these digits and keys where you could create your, you know, you can get to your own levels and create your own type of uh, points and, you know, planes and stuff like that. Preserve power points, tip for Ninja Gaiden G, really. Then they, te they teach you how to clip through here to get your way out of this. That, that It's so cool that this tip is used in speedruns. So Nintendo Power was the godfather of that there. Mm -hmm. And then S-Star Soldier, I don't know much about that game. Mega Man 2, hold the mustard. Yeah. <laughs> so they're showing you about use Time Stopper and stuff like that. That's something that you could use uh, through these um, you know, acid places at the last level in Wily's Castle. Patience pays, so you know they're kind of teaching how to move through if you run into trouble. Monster maneuver, like they'll tell you how to make it through, uh, basically hell, you know, Death Valley as they call it on the way to the Great Palace. Mirror image uh, code for Tech Mobile. Uh, let's see, Legacy of the Wizard, music lessons, free armor, bonus players. That's pretty cool. So here's another Howard and Nestor comic, and we're seeing Wily's castle from Mega Man 2, and Nestor's dressed up in Mega Man's uh, outfit. From the depths of Skull Castle, one day a challenge was broadcast to the world. Anyone able to match wits against the evil genius of Dr. Wily will become the master of Skull Castle and its mechanical menagerie. Through the rewards of victory were staggering, or though the rewards of victory were staggering, only one person dared to accept the challenge and face the dangers of the world of Mega Man 2. His name was Nestor. This is his story. <laughs> Tell Dr. Wily that the awesome Mega Mind Nestor will beat the challenge. And then we got the little robot dog from Woodman's level. So where is this amazing Nestor person? It's me, mechan me mechanic or mecha mechanized mutt. Now take me to your leader. <laughs> So, you think you can outwit the great Dr. Wiley, do you? What is your subject? Video games, tips and tactics, prepare to lose your shirt and everything else. In that case, I shall use my latest invention. It is the ultimate in-game playing aids, the humanoid Omni-Wonder automatic robot device. 
I bet it's not as good as an NES Advantage. <laughs> and then it's Howard. It's a robot Howard. Oh, we will dear. call it Howard, and it's all abbreviated. For short, he's far superior to the original human model. Yeah, yeah, the, the humanoid Omni Wonder automatic robotic device Howard, yeah. That's not <laughs> saying much. Yeah. So, Nestor found himself face-to-face -face with the ultimate in simulated intelligence, designed specifically to play video games. With the contestant about to begin, he silently recited some of his best tips, the sort that were guaranteed to stump the silicon opponent. The first to miss three questions would lose the match, his reputation, and everything else. So we got first round, and we got one of the monkey robots from Woodman stage yet again, basically uh, holding up the first round sign so we couldn't get like a bikini robot. Come on. <laughs> I can see the robot fish, I can see the dragon, I can see the guts dozer <laughs> in the background, the gear clown. That's pretty funny. <laughs> and he's outfitting Howard. What's the best weapon to use against Bubble, Bubble Man, the metal blade? What stage should you defeat first? Now that's up to debate. I usually start with Metal Man, but some people start with Quick Man, or some people start with Bubble Man. The Air Man stage, Circuit Head. <laughs> Circuit Head. <laughs> Hours passed, then the match went on. Nestor and Howard each uh, had each missed one question, so oh, the next no. incorrect answer would spell defeat. Again, it was Nestor's turn to challenge, but he couldn't think of a question to ask. No tricks and tips or strategies came to mind. His brain had gone blank, and his one thought was to escape from the impossible situation. Instead of asking a game question, he cried, How do you get out of this place? Calculating, Wait a minute, he doesn't know how to get out. That's not fair! How could he know how to go outside when he's never even heard of an outside? I call foul! Yes, Master, you called, and one of the robot chickens shows up there. In the first section of the Dr. Wily, there is an impossible jump. From the top of a ladder to a second ladder, far to the left, above the first. An impossible jump. An impossible jump. <laughs> Wrong! Use all, th use all three item number uh, one levitation platform steps, like steps going up to the side of the from the right side to the left. The last port from platform you can jump under the ladder. It's a cinch. Yep. <laughs> Where's your loyalty, you micro-brained munchkins? Nestor is the winner! <laughs> now repeat after me, Howard. Nestor is the greatest game player in the universe. Yes, Master, Nestor is the... And then, all of a sudden, uh -oh. Howard wakes up. Oh, what a horrible dream. <laughs> <laughs> Video shorts, Air Fortress. I don't know much about that. Sky Shark, that's kind of a similar game to 1943, except it uh, wasn't as good. Casino Kid, you know, pretty much go through and cheat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Castle Quest, kind of similar to Mario uh, Mario and uh, Milan's Castle. Mm -hmm. And a little Zelda. <laughs> Jordan vs. Bird one-on-one. -on -one. Enjoy playing the same two players over and over. Okay. Bad Street Brawler, a dragon war or excuse me, double dragon wannabe that sucked. Okay. Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which had a lot of promise in a strategy game, and then later on they took a Dragon Quest style look, and it got better. Oh. So let's get to the top 30. Oh Number one is Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link for some reason. Mm -hmm. Number two is Mario Brothers 2, no surprise. Number three is Ninja Gaiden. That should be number one at this time, but that's just me. <laughs> number four is The Legend of Zelda. Number five, Blaster Master. So that's not too bad of a top five. Number six is Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Legacy of the Wizards number seven for some reason. Bionic Commando is number eight. Guardian Legend is number nine for some reason. Metroid is number ten. At least they kept them in the top ten. Eleven is Tecmo Bowl, which should be in the top ten. Number twelve is Mega Man Two, which should be in the top ten. Yeah, come on. Mega Man is number thirteen. Track and Field Two, number fourteen. Hudson's Adventure Island, number fifteen. Uh, Ninja Turtles sixteen. Mike Tyson's Punch Out seventeen. That should be higher. Yeah. Eighteen Contra. That should be higher. Nineteen Metal Gear. Uh, Twenty is Super Mario Brothers three. That has this is slowly starting to come out. And they're going to have an entire issue dedicated to the Mario 3 strategy guide. And I used to own it until my brother tore it up. Number 21 is Adventures of Lolo for some reason. 22 is Bases Loaded. 23 is Double Dragon. 24 is Mylan's Secret Castle. No. 25 is Blades of Steel. <laughs> 26 is Ultima. That's pretty cool. 27 is Super Mario Brothers. 28 is Castlevania. Okay. Oh, come the on! The original Mario Brothers is above Castlevania. That's it. I call, I call conspiracy. Yeah! 29 is Bad Dudes, and 30 is Double Dribble. 29 and 30 shouldn't even be there. Player's picks have Zelda 2, Pro's picks have Zelda 2, and Dealer's picks has Mario 2, so 
no surprise there. Ninja Gaiden does make the number three for players and dealers. But Ninja Gaiden is not in the pros, even though it's at number nine, but should be higher. Player picks Mirror of top, Final Top 30 standings. Game counselors can't get enough of Zelda 2. Dealers side with Mario and Luigi. Well, it's no surprise. Usually a lot of people selling video games love Mario and Luigi to death. Yeah. So the pack watch. Shadowgate, basically you got your first person screen, your list of goods, your commands here. It was an awesome format for adventure games and you'd have to have like really good uh, thinking for it basically. Lateral thinking as they call it. The same thing with like Deja Vu. And uh, you know this is the screen you see if uh, you don't make it. Now they made a Game Boy Color version of this which I own. And it's a really, I mean, it's a really fun game. You know, Shadowgate's a really fun adventure game to go through. They even did a uh, remake of it that was okay. Codename Viper was sim somewhat similar to Bionic Commando minus the arm. Some pretty good art or uh, in-game uh, portrait work. Basis Loaded 2 is coming. I don't really know what this uh, alien is starting to do to this uh, gentleman who's bent over in his NASA suit. Uh, this wow! Kinda, yeah, this kind of looks like a uh, backdoor train. Uh -huh. And then yeah. Gilligan's Island, I don't even want to know. Tombs and Treasure kind of looks like an adventure game there. It's a two-beak! Two-headed bird. Oh. <laughs> oh, this lame Godzilla game. Yeah, it's a lame one. Boy is Blob, where you feed the blob jelly beans, of course. What's happening in the world of Game Boy? A lot of good stuff on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Then Pictionary and then Double Dare, of course. Physical Challenge. Captain Skyhawk, Cabal, and the Time Lords, Wild Boys, Baseball Simulator, Web World and Urban Convoy, Demon Sword, Ooh. NES Planner, Back to the Future, oh boy, can't wait for that crap. <laughs> Alright, so, we got the NES Achievers, so 1943, Blaster Master, Bomberman, Bomberman, mm -hmm. Cobra Command, Double Dragon, <laughs> <laughs> Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf, all I can think of on that is uh, uh, all I can think of on that is that Simpsons episode where Bart stole a uh, uh, bone storm, and it's just like uh, you have. You, I recommend a putter. Three wood. You are on the green. Three wood. <laughs> John Henry for Gradius. Gotcha. Guardian Le Legend Gunsmoke. Anybody rep representing the homies of Arizona? Gyrus. Adventure Island. Oh, somebody in San Antonio. Cool. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Jackal, Kid Nicky, Legendary Wings, Legacy of the Wizard, Life Force, Adventures of Lolo. Boy, no Arizona homies yet. Magmax, Mappy Land, Marble Madness, Mega Man, Mystery Quest, Ninja Gaiden, Pinball, Platoon, Rampage, Robo Warrior, Skater Die, Star Force, Stinger, Top Gun. Trek and Field, Ultima, Wizards and Warriors, Xenophobe, Xenophobe. <laughs> and Xevious. Yeah. No Arizona. Oh, wait, there you go. Williams, Arizona. Wow. Gateway to Vegas, playing Skate or Die. Jeez. Okay. Williams is really far. Well, uh, well oh, wait. Williams is between Kingman and uh, and uh, Flagstaff. My bad. Yeah, it, you, if you were on your, let's say you're coming from Vegas and you want to go to uh, to Grand Canyon, you can take a route from Williams to get up there if you want to bypass Flagstaff. But yeah, yeah. lots of stuff with snow. I, yeah, I was swapping. Like skier tube. I was swapping Williams and Kingman for a second, so Kingman's the gateway to Vegas. But anyway, hey, here we go. NES Journal, Captain N, the Game Master. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a cartoon that I grew up with and I loved it to death. I didn't care how corny or cheesy like I'm it circling. It is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm circling Mega Man here. I did not give a shit how corny and cheesy it was. It was a it was your dream being sucked into a world and playing Nintendo games for real. Oh my god. Last issue, we told you about a television program based on the Mario Brothers. There is another television show coming your way based on the Nintendo and licensee characters. It's titled Captain N the Game Master and concerns 15-year-old Kevin Keane, a high school student and power player from Northridge, California, who is magically summoned into his television to Nintendo Land. 
Princess Lana, who rules Nintendo Land, had gathered together the forces of light, the, her the heroes of, of the different areas which compromised Nintendo Land. Together, they invoked the power of the orb and summon a champion from another world, Kevin, to fight the League of Darkness. As Kevin is pulled into his TV set, his loyal dog Duke faithfully follows as his, ma uh, his master to the, uh, and is also transported to Nintendo Land. Among the characters Kevin meets, power players will recognize Simon Belmont, Castlevania, Kit, Kid Icarus, and Mega Man, as well as the Eggplant Wizard, Kid Icarus, King Hippo, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, and the Cunning Doctor Wily, Mega Man. However, we suspect Captain N will, uh, will uh, find his greatest challenge with the diabolical mother brain, Metroid. Samus was in the comics and vied for Kevin's attention with Princess Lana. I think they didn't put that into the show because. I think they were trying. To, I think they were trying to think that basically two chicks hitting on a dude was a bit too sexualized. But oh well, the comic, you know, basically kind of uh, was a little bit more serious. Um, this program, new to NBC's Saturday morning fall schedule, is produced by those wizards at Deke who were responsible for the wonderfully successful Pee Wee's Playhouse and the cartoon version of Elf, as well as the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. The show is scheduled to start September 9th, so check your local listings where you had that TV guide back then. Oh, the super I, show. <laughs> you know, we had to get together with everybody and just watch them and just, you know, watch them together and just, you know, do like kind of like our little side by side Captain commentary. Ng, I've only seen parts of a couple episodes. Oh, you can still have so, fun with us regardless. Then it would be nice to see him fully, is my point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's something we can record and watch together because I know a YouTube channel that has it and we'll give them credit, of course, and everything. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Captain N, as corny as it was, it's still something that I like to go back and visit from time to time and watch. They had three seasons of it. Two of them, the first two were the most popular, and then the third one, when they started losing rights and stuff like that, you started seeing a lack, a lack, a lax in animation, even though they got to some pretty cool games like Mega Man 3, Castlevania 3, Adventures of Robin Hood, and even Final Fantasy. But unfortunately, they only had enough time to reduce things down to 15-minute uh, episodes rather than a half hour. So it was, yeah, it was really lame. Uh, not many people knew there was a third season, but to the purists like us, barf. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad there. So now we go to uh, a celebrity profile for Brian Robbins. Who was a uh, celebrity, basically from he was like the host of Pictionary, and he also was in that. Uh, he was like, uh, yeah, he was like the host of Pictionary, and there's his, uh, you know, quintessential late '80s, early '90s mullet there. So basically, he's a genius with an IQ of 200, and dates the sweetest girl in class. He has it all, of course. So yeah, <laughs> he's uh, yeah. It's basically Eric Mar uh, Mardian. It's from a uh, TV. I forget which TV show he was from. Um, head of the class, there we go. Oh. So he gets punched out every week by his personal athletic trainer. Now, since I don't really know too much about him, if you want to pause it, you can read that there. The NES cleaning kit. This is something that I actually did have. It was a cartridge that you would put a, um, what was it? Like you would put kind of like this little uh, dust collector in, stick it in, stick it into the, uh, you know, into the, into the cartridge port. And it was supposed to clean the circuits for it and whatnot. Let's just say this, it didn't really do that good of a job. <laughs> oh, I remember one of those for the GameCube. Yeah. It actually kind of worked better. <laughs> there's that. There's a huge-ass Game Boy little setup there. So there's the back issues that are available that we've reviewed, so pretty cool there. So we're coming to an end here. So coming up in the next November-December issue of Nintendo Power, Iron Sword and Robocop will be going from the far past of Wizards and Warriors to the future world of Cyborg Policemen with our gripping reviews of Iron Sword and Robocop. Dragon Warrior, a massive 36-page bonus insert devoted to Dragon Warrior, complete with map strategies and tactics exclusive for Ooh. Nintendo Power readers. So of course we were excited. Shadowgate and Silent Service. Look for a perilous review of the Too Hot to Handle Shadowgate and see if you can fathom it. We'll also submerge ourselves in the preview for Ultra's new sub, uh, submarine game Silent Service Scope, that, which was a pretty interesting game, plus generous helpings of NES Journal Councils, Corner, Pack Watch, Players Pulse, Classified Info, Video Shorts, for, and for dessert, much, much more. 
So let's see what uh, Howard has to say. To the readers, what a summer. We kicked it off at the giant consumer electronics show in Chicago, and what a show it was. I think these shows get bigger and more spectacular every time. There are a lot of impressive gizmos, gadgets, products, and packs. As always, we'll give you the latest scoops and hot info right here in Nintendo Power. The big news this summer has been Nintendo's visits to the Soviet Union. We wish everyone could have had a ch have been taking place uh, connect concerning Tetris or could have had a chance to experience the culture firsthand, sorry. We've been realizing our own video game, uh, video game glass noise meetings have been taking pl uh, place concerning Tetris, one of the most compelling video games in history. People all over the world have been Tetrisized, and very soon <coughs> NES power players will get to test their metal into, with this absorbing game. It is already available for the, in the Game Boy version, where its popularity has skyrocketed, just part of Nintendo's continuing efforts to bring it, you know, the very best in video games from all over the world. These past few months, we've tested and evaluated more games uh, that are than at, at any one time in our history. There are some exciting new programs on the burner, and we expect several of these to be very hot. So don't stray too far from your current issue of Nintendo Power. It really is your best guide to keeping up to date on what's happening with the video game world. That's it this time. See you in November. <laughs> So there's a um, Robocop 2 grand prize, win a trip to Ford to the movie set of Robocop 2, meet Robocop in person, witness hair-raising action stunts, and tour Houston. That's right, the winner and three guests of his or her choice fly to Houston, Texas, courtesy of Data East, to get a behind-the-scenes look at a blockbuster movie in the making. Gee, I wonder if they're going to show the violent parts with Kane, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah, who knows? So now we got another players poll contest, of course, that you fill out. After reading the article on the Game Boy in page 51, how interested are you in owning one? Oh, I'm definitely buying one myself. Did you find that uh, that the Super Mario Brothers 2 tip-up in this issue provides too little, too much info, things like that? And then, of course, you fill out the 111 Nintendo games that are now out in there. And uh, wow. then just fill that out there. And then they show the contest winners from the last one, John Hamm from Woodbridge, Virginia. Basically one, yeah. Wow. So we got all these wonderful people here who won their their precious little toys. Ooh, Blair Sato from Tucson, Arizona. Wow. All right. The question is, Represent. is that a boy or a girl? Right. I don't know. <laughs> All right, and that's it. So that's pretty much it for issue eight there. So that was a lot of fun. We got to get into that after talking a lot of political trash. Yeah. <laughs> so unfortunately, um, group gaming and uh, and blind gaming playthroughs will be on uh, standby until I get a, a new laptop because it mine just just the graphics. Uh, as I said in my political video today, the uh, graphics uh, driver just doesn't want to work properly. Sadly not. Yep. Um, but. Uh, 20, unfortunately, we didn't get to do a lot that we planned for 2020 because of COVID, plus work schedules changing and all that. So, unfortunately, a lot of our James Bond and stu stuff just <clears throat> got put on hiatus. Doesn't mean, though, that it's... <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, sorry. Doesn't mean that we're doomed or it's not going to happen. We're doomed! <laughs> YouTube uh, showed James Bond for free for a bit, and it's just really sad that uh, they stopped doing that because I was going to be able to... Uh, you know, like basically Boca and I were like, hell, they're showing the games for free on YouTube. We're not going to be committing an atroc atrocity this time, but alas. Um, but yeah, just be on the lookout. We'll be, uh, you know, playing more games in the future, obviously. Probably going to play a little more um, Cyberpunk up the road. Um, you know, there's still some other games that we can give a whirl, like uh, the DuckTales Remastered is definitely on the list there. Mm -hmm. Betrayal of Crondor is still definitely a game that we can go through. That's going to take forever, but yeah, <laughs> we can still do it, exactly. Um, you know, we can just do, there's just a lot of stuff that we've got that we can play through and have some fun with. I have a fun game that I can play through with people that has pictures and I can also play by myself called Crazy Party. It's Are you basically a combination of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> does your, does your lap, oh, does your laptop, just, um, does your laptop have an HDMI port? No. Oh. Uh, okay. But I could uh, put the, the game's not very big, so I could put it on uh, like a thumb drive and play it on your computer. Oh, like, okay. And we can, you can listen to it off the speakers, I'm guessing then. Yes. Oh, okay. I also yeah. would need to use my screen reader, but it doesn't do anything seriously bad to your computer. Well, we'll it's think, not Jaws, it's a yeah. different We'll think about that. That, so that sounds that like possibly. I don't want to take. I mean, I want. I want Pikachu to throw out games and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes complexities of certain things are basically my overall concern with like programs. Easy, but though. yeah, you know exactly. 
So anyway, um, got about uh, 50 minutes until I got to pick up the Remy, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. So we'll see you next time. Uh, I don't. We'll see if there's any other funny stuff that's going to happen. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more political stuff to talk about. Oh God! Uh, but uh, we'll see if anything <laughs> else along the way shows up that's funny. And we'll definitely keep reviewing uh, Nintendo Power. Yeah. But in the meantime, uh, this is Gray Fox 37. And Pikachu 23. And you guys have a great one.